So now it's time for another Myths and Artwork video for you all. Once again, I have to thank Andrew Riley for sponsoring this video so that I could get it made. He likes to get a lot of speed drawing videos from me and this was the next one that I had ready to go. So similar to the last video, which was the Grey Lady, this was originally a drawing done for Inktober last year, where during an art stream, the people in chat chose the theme for each of my drawings. This day's theme was rodent, and of course I wanted to keep it a little bit spooky, so I decided to go with the cryptid known as Jackalope. Maybe I could have done something scarier with rodents eating people or something like that, but... Well, this was the idea that jumped into my head at that point in time, so this is what I ran with. Plus, I had originally been trying to draw more landscapes and backgrounds and things like that, because I am terrible at them. Alright, but that's an awful lot of wa waffle about nothing at all. We're here for some info about the jackalope, and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised to find out that this creature, or cryptid, is less than a hundred years old. It's not to be mistaken for any of the creatures similarly described in Native American practices, nor some parts of Asia and even Australia. No, the jackalope itself was created in the most interesting and deceptive way. Now let's segue just a little bit, it'll lead back into the theme I later I promise, but let's go into taxidermy. It's a skill, or lack thereof if any of the internet memes are to be believed, in taking a dead body of an animal and turning it into a statue. You stuff it and create a hopefully lifelike representation of the creature it originally was. Now yes, there are some horror stories out there, some terrible tortured looking animals who have died and been turned into some really weird creatures, or just the artists themselves is so bad you really can't tell what the creature originally was. However, the aim of taxidermy is to mimic life, to take something that's dead and breathe life into it for a moment and then catch that moment for eternity, or as close to eternity as you can get because one day the inevitable heat death of the universe will end everything, but that is a little bit morbid and for another time. A good taxidermist can create a creature stuck in time, or can be a complete and utter charlatan. There are lots of tales of taxidermists creating creatures for profit. There were mermaids in the old curiosity shops of London. Chimeras recreated from creatures that have no honest sense being sewn together. Winged monkeys, the zodiac Capricorn itself, hippogriffs and many other creatures. Like our jackalope, who was originally found and created by Douglas Henrik of Wyoming. He and his brother studied taxidermy by mail so they could try and make some extra money from their kills. After combining a jackrabbit with a set of antlers, they sold their first jackalope to Roy Hall, who displayed it in his hotel. They then sold many of these fake creatures throughout their lives, and you'd be surprised to find out that these jackalopes are still being sold today. To keep in line with their very man-made origins, there are a lot of stories that are very tongue-in-cheek and silly. Hunters of jackalopes are warned that they must wear stovepipes over their legs to prevent themselves from being gored by the creature's antlers. Just in case you didn't know, that means the chimneys that come out of old style ovens. I believe that's what they're called. Their meat and milk was sometimes, and according to the rumour mill still is, sold at stores in Douglas. But there were news outlets that questioned the authenticity of this as apparently the task of milking such a creature is incredibly hard. They are terribly hard to catch, let alone milk, though some hunters say that it's easier than once thought as jackalopes enjoy whiskey and an inebriated cryptid is one more easily dealt with. Once again, this is a pretty questionable tactic. As anyone knows, there are mostly two ways that drunks go, violent or docile. That's science working there for you, kiddies. Speaking of science, there is a belief that some stories of the jackalope appeared because there is an illness, a fungal illness, that can cause horn-like protuberances to appear across a rabbit's head, back and legs. It also has a habit of making them a bit more aggressive, so that can cover the reason for the jackalope being the way that it is. It's a disease that seems more prevalent in the Americas and certain parts of Asia and feeds into the idea of this myth. However, it is only really a footnote in the story of the jackalope, so it's not something I can really comment on here. So that's it really, that's the jackalope, a creature that was created by a much more modern audience than originally thought. 
As I said, there are plenty of very similar creatures that belong to the Native American tribes, but I don't really want to post anything about them as I do not want to be giving out the wrong information. However, there are loads of resources for you to look yourself, and these videos are only ever supposed to be a quick taster and teaser for something you might want to read up on when you're bored, or a new creature for you to include in your games, or well, I don't know, just something interesting to throw at your trivia pursuit friends. Once again, I would like to say a huge thank you to my Patreon, Andrew Riley, for this video request, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to join me on Twitch where I do a creative stream every Friday night, the links are down below. You never know, you might be one of those lucky people that chooses what we draw next. So until next time, as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Take care, have fun, and goodbye.